Slow cycling is not about your speed. Slow cycling is like slow food. It's about savoring your ride, the sights and sounds and smells and indeed tastes as you go. Now, slow cycling is also not something that I do, ironically perhaps, because I never feel like I've got the time for it. But I'm off to meet a man who's long been a high profile advocate of taking the road less traveled and savoring it as he goes. So I'm gonna get some tips so we can all do it too. Jack Thurston is the author of The Lost Lanes Guides to Cycling in the UK. He's the host of the Bike Show podcast and also a star of some of our most popular films over on GCM+. Now, I was lucky enough to go for a ride with Jack for GCM+, Plus on some of my old training roads. The route, I think I could have probably done it in about four hours, but it took us two days and it was absolutely brilliant. So I'm back for more, armed with a map, which Jack has asked me to bring, and a thermos. I know what you're thinking, I'm not old enough to own a thermos, but yes, I actually am. This is mine, and I flipping love maps. Plus, our meeting point is this amazing cafe. So, frankly, I'm sold already all over again. So, Jack, what is slow cycling? It's one of those things, Si, that you know it when you see it, but it's quite hard to put into words. Okay. <laughs> I think I'd say, what it's not, and what it's not is riding your bike in a race, okay. or riding your bike as if you were in a race or training for a race. Okay. So it's non-race cycling. Right, um, but so I've come in pretty much the perfect attire for exactly. you. Exactly, you dress for the part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it's as much about what you do off the bike, the kind of the purpose of your journey, taking the time to look around, to enjoy the countryside. When you're on a bicycle, it's really easy to fall into the trap of just pushing those pedals as hard as you can. But it takes a little bit of effort to just ease off and enjoy the idea of just drifting around the countryside and seeing what you see as you go along. And that is, for me, what slow cycling is all about. I think a lot of people maybe associate slow cycling with long days out exploring the countryside or maybe even you know holidaying with a bike. But you're going to show me a route that's a regular of yours, like a short, slow cycling route. Is that right? Yeah, so we're going to go out for about 90 minutes okay. on a route that I did a lot during the COVID lockdowns. Um, it's a beautiful loop. Um, took me about 10 miles away from home, and it stops at a place where I picked up milk from a farm. Um, so I didn't have to go to the supermarket to uh, bring in milk from the, for the family. And um, it just it seemed like a good excuse to get out of the house. And we're going to see some lovely Monmouthshire countryside. And, you know, what else there is along the way that may surprise us? Cool. So this is called the Milk Run then, is it? I think this, we could call this the Milk Run. The Milk Run, right. Because my local route at home is called the Lung Buster, <laughs> which I don't think is slow cycling. Well, we're in Abergavenny, um, which is surrounded by three mountains. And our route is essentially going to be a circumnavigation of the Big Skirid. And we will go out towards um, Crossmont Wood Farm, where the, uh, where the milk is. Great stuff. All right. Well, let's All crack right. on. Ready to roll? Yeah, let's do it. Um, Jack, I don't seem to have anywhere to put a map. It's just not quite um, I mean, that is fitting. one of the disadvantages of these uh, race bikes. How are you going to carry the milk back? Uh, well, I suppose I can drink my tea. Should we cross that bridge when we come to it? Yeah, if you've got, right. you got room in your... Uh, I'll slip that in my saddlebag for you. <laughs> On it. We're going to turn left here, Sai. Into the lanes we go. So, Jack, here in the UK, People are going to be familiar with your Lost Lanes guidebooks, but for people watching in other countries, what is a Lost Lane? Well, a Lost Lane is very much like what we're riding on now. Um, I mean, these are the kind of roads that are so narrow that if two cars meet one another, yeah. then someone's going to have to back up or pull over into the hedge and get past. And that's why drivers avoid these roads at all costs, unless yeah. they happen to live on one. And these lanes crisscross our country. Pretty much everywhere you go, you can cycle around on these kind of lanes. Yeah. They're not always the most direct route, 
They're not always the flattest route. They're certainly not the fastest route, but you know, you know me, that's not the point, yeah. riding fast. But they are beautiful places, beautiful experiences in my view, because they're so varied. You can know, you could be up in the mountains on a narrow lane, coming along here through hedgerows, you can't really see much, but we'll be up into some woodland up ahead. And I think it's just unlimited pleasure to be had on a bicycle exploring on roads like these. So hold up a minute, Sai. So you got a puncture? <laughs> Not yet. No, this, this lane is one of my favorite bits of this journey. Okay. So if you look that way, I just think it's this wonderfully composed scene with the, the lane just snaking away there, that S shape into the, around the corner, around down the hill. Yeah. And then this beautiful oak tree on the left with its forked uh, trunk. And I come up here all times of year. And I'll usually bring my camera and just stop and take a little photo, often the same photo. So I've got a kind of sequence of photos of like autumnal, summer, winter from this spot. That's cool. Yeah, so I think I need to add one to the collection. Okay, I, I, the idea of just stopping on a road is alien to me. So, I mean, I often say this to people, when you stop and get off the bike, you double what you see of the countryside because you look back the way you've just come. Oh, he's looking strong. Beautiful. Right. <laughs> All right. Nice. One for the Instagram. <laughs> Right, onwards? Yep. Cool. Oops. Clunk. And it's always a good thing, always a good thing in cycling to just to, just before you're about to go up or down a very big hill, it's just to double check the map, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, no, that is very prudent, actually. There is nothing worse than getting to the bottom of a descent and finding that you actually should have gone the other way. Yeah. You've got to go all the way back up again. Yeah. <laughs> Another nice view. <laughs> Stopped again. That's where, our, that's where we'll get our milk, up there on, the, uh, on that hill. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so not far now. Okay. That is actually a banger of a view, isn't it? How good is this? It's raw, raw milk. milk. It's unpasteurized. Good. That's so cool. <laughs> the, uh... I suppose you can't be out for too long with uh, raw milk in no, your saddlebag no, because exactly. you'll end up with butter by the time you get <laughs> yeah, home. Right? Exactly, churned, freshly churned butter. Yeah, okay, I should practice on the mountain bike. This is a quaint chapel, isn't it? Yeah. So one of the things that I always worry about slow cycling for me is that I don't feel like I've got the time to go for a bar ride and then sit down and have a brew stop. But would you genuinely make time within a short bike ride just to stop and get off the saddle and... Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's all about a change of scene. It's about a change of pace. It's about using your body rather than sitting at the desk typing away. So you know, I work from home most of the time when I'm not, not out researching. And I will often just go for a lunchtime bike ride for half an hour, then sit by the side of the river with my sandwich, eat it and cycle back. And, you know, it's maybe a slightly longer lunch break than I might take if I was eating the sandwich at my desk. But I come back so much more refreshed and the same thing applies for a yeah go for a brew stop on a, on a morning ride or a night ride I might cycle 10-15 miles sleep out on a hill and come back the next morning that's cool and I'll be back you know before the kids are woken up
Now, so I, as you know, I don't really need many excuses to stop when I'm out on the ride, but I would always stop for a tree like that. Isn't that magnificent? That is, that is majestic. Yeah, agreed. So there's a, there was a, a moment in um, one of the slow cycling films where I did actually hug a tree, and I'm not sure how well that's going to go <laughs> do my <laughs> reputation, but I wondered if you fancy hugging this tree and give um, it a go. seeing if... I mean, almost too big to get your arms around it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It's quite spiky in lycra, I'm not going to lie. I've got, I've got some holly tickling my nose, but I'm getting the gist of it. Hang on a minute. Well, Abergavenny, straight ahead. So th that was our last opportunity for a little... Well, we, can always, we can always stop. As you promised, Jack, we're getting up to 90 minutes for our ride and we're nearly back, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I've been watching the time, actually, and I mean, uh, you know, that's my way. Old habits die hard for me. Just ride. Ah, that has been a very relaxing, very enjoyable bike ride. It's got to be said, I, uh, I think I'm going to take some of these tips on board. I'm really glad to hear it, Si. I, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how much time I'm going to spend in graveyards, but Definitely a bit more tree hugging and stopping <laughs> for photos and looking at the view. Well, sometimes you'll have to come back and try and convert me into being a fast cyclist and give me a go on a bike like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, go on then. You're on. I'm up for that. But no, genuinely, thanks so much, no, Jack. It's been a pleasure. And uh, if you want to see more of Jack on those GCM Plus films, then make sure you head over there now. I think there's five already up, aren't there, for you to yeah. watch. Um, and if you like this video, right turn, right turn then please give it a big thumbs up.